Last week, we had a look at my simplified Comfy UI workflow, which allowed you to chat or ask questions in order to generate images, thanks to the power of a tiny llama. This week, a whole bunch of stuff has been added. We've got Ali Mama Turbo, which is similar to the 8-step Hyperlora, but with a much smaller file size. Also from Ali Mama is a new in-painting control net, ideal for those who like to make tiny edits to images, like in their examples. And best of all, I think, is something with the rather complicated sounding name of Rectified Flow Inversion. Don't worry about the name though, just look at the cool pictures to see what it does. Oh yeah. For those of you who are new here, you can do all of this for free at home on your computer. You'll need Comfy UI installed, along with the Comfy UI Manager, and of course the various models for Flux. You should also have the new beta interface enabled, not the legacy one. I've already done videos on all of that stuff with links in the video description should you need more information. So without further ado, let's get into the new stuff. You'll need an input image for in-painting all the rectified flow unsampling. So I've added this new input image section down at the bottom. If you do want to use the rectified flow unsampler, you just click yes on that, which is pretty cool. If you want to do image to image, then you just click yes on that. And if you want to do in painting, then you've guessed it. Yes, you just click on that. So there's an optional composite mode there as well. So once again, you can just turn that on and off. I'll show you more about what that does in a moment. Starting off with the Ali Mama Turbo. If you remember from last week, pressing one or using the bookmark one will take you up to the settings here. And this is where you put the turbo. So there it is, Flux Turbo. Alpha eight step safe tensors. Now this one has a strength of one. So the, the default there, which is a little bit different to the Hyperlora, which is obviously much lower than that. The other difference is the file size there at around 700 meg. That's roughly half the size of the Hyperlora, which is around 1.4 gig. The other thing to take a note of is the guidance strength. So here I've got guidance 1.8 and you've got an image like that crank it up a bit. In this example, I've got it set to 3.2 and your images will turn out a lot better. So you need a slightly higher guidance strength with this eight step turbo. As a comparison, here's the same generation using Hyper. Is turbo better? Is Hyper better? I'm not sure. This one's on 1.8. So with Hyper, you can use a slightly lower guidance strength, but I don't know. It, it's personal preference, I think, at this point as to whether turbo or Hyper is better, but I'll be using turbo throughout this video. Does that mean you can do turbo rectified flow and turbo in painting? Sure you can. Now, I really like the rectified flow unsampling. So let's take a look at that option. Now, as mentioned in this workflow, all you have to do for unsampling is just click it on. Now, as a side note, the Fluxtapos custom nodes don't yet show up in Manager, but I'm sure they will be there soon. What you can do instead is install via Git URL, or if you need to, just install it the same way you installed Manager with a quick Git clone into your custom nodes and then installing the requirements that way. Okay, so what's happening with this unsampler mode anyway? Essentially what it does is it takes a little longer than usual because it, it goes in reverse to start with. So it does eight steps of unsampling to create a load of noise, which then forms the base for your prompt to work from. Uh, and in this example, giving us this really cool result. So it's exactly the same prompt as before, the rodent standing outside his chip shop, but it's taken my input image. And there we can sort of see a little bit of a chip shop, but yeah, I, I think that's a really cool result. If you want to check out all the complex bits and pieces, then do take a look at the example workflows they provide. But I've broken it down here for turbo unsampling in easy mode. As you've seen, all you have to do is turn the mode on plus. The other thing you can do is combine it with a little bit of unsampling. So at the moment, I've got a guidance down here of zero, a separate guidance scale and an empty prompt. And we're getting, you know, some interesting looking images. But what if I wanted to do more of a style change like in their examples? Well, the thing is we're doing turbo unsampling here, giving us just eight steps instead of the massive 28. The speed is great, though it doesn't provide much of a chance for it to do any changes. On top of that, it is still early days with these nodes being a work in progress. And to make things even more fun, uh, there does seem to be a little bit of non-determinism in there. Now, because I'm nuttier than squirrel poop, I thought I was imagining things. Maybe I'd messed up 
but it does indeed do the same thing in their workflows too. Just to show you what I mean by this, there we've got an original image. So now all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change this guidance down to zero. I'm gonna generate another image. So let's just do that now. Okay, that's fine. We've got a completely different image, but if I put the guidance back again, to 0.2, you'd expect to get the same image that we had before back, wouldn't you? Well, let's see what happens. Um, nope, that's a completely different image. And you can, of course, do the same thing just by changing any of the text. So you can put a full stop in there and then take it out. And anytime it redoes that conditioning, you'll get a completely different image. So that has made testing uh, a little bit tricky. Anyway, with that in mind, assuming you don't change the conditioning, then you'll be good to start changing the ETA with higher values looking more like your source image. So here we've got an ETA of 0.85. If I increase that, so here I've got it set to 0.9, then it's starting to look a little bit more like the source image. If I increase it again, and here it is on 0.975, so getting more and more like the source image. You can also make it even more like the source image by changing this ETA trend. So before it was going downwards, that was a linear down. Now we've got a constant and with constant, you can keep a quite low ETA. So here it's on 0.825. As you can see, then lots of different options there for how much you want to change the image. Of course, that's not all because you can also sort of use it to take the style from an image too. Now this is a lot more tricky and to be honest, those random results do make it even more difficult to get some good turbo settings here at the moment. My suggestion is play around, but here I've got it set to two steps. So with turbo, you can go up to eight. Essentially the image is done in the first three, which is why I normally use the linear decrease there, but here I've got it on constant and two. And it's, it's essentially taken the colors from there. It's, it's a little bit like the style. And what I've got down here is a prompt for it as well. So I've given it a made up name, uh, a Zizzy pattern style with flowers. And I've put that similar prompt up there, the Zizzy pattern. And yeah, you know, it's, it's close. You can also use it to do, well, very weird things. So here I've got a linear increase and quite a low ETA value. Once again, I'm saying that's a pattern and uh, it, it's done that with it, which is strange. And if you want to make things even more strange, I'd suggest changing the ETA values down to about 0.5 or 0.7. Here I've got the objectively best value, 0.666, with the uh, source image getting turned into that. Mm, definitely a rodent. I could probably keep going for ages on this RF unsampler bit. There's loads of options to play with in there. Changing those ETA values and the steps and the prompts and everything can definitely get you some very strange images. But let's take a look at the in-painting next. One thing to take note of is they just use generic names for all of their model files. So you are going to have to rename this Diffusion PyTorch model to something a bit more sensible. If you want to use the same names as me, I've called mine Alimama Control In Painting Beta. Whatever name you pick, settings is where you're going to need to load it. Just as a quick note, because I suck at switches, when you turn the unsampler mode off, it will unmute the in painting nodes, which then automatically turns them back on again. Not a massive thing, but something to be aware of. So you can just turn them off if you, if you don't want in painting, but it goes on automatically. Anyway, let's take a look at this. So with the in-painting on, you also get the option to composite that as well, which puts the original non-masked bits back onto your generation. So if you've got text or other fine details that you don't want to be changed, that's a perfect use of this option. For the moment, masking is just taken from the image node. So you're going to have to right click and then either open in SAM detector or down here, you can open in mask editor. There's the image I've got very nicely masked. Got a robot there. We can cancel that because I've already got it saved to Node. I'm changing him once again to the rodent gentleman outside a chip shop. And that's not too bad. It's not too bad. Now that's with the image composite mode on, which can actually cause problems sometimes. Like in this example, the masking is pretty obvious. Let's open that image up. So you can see where I've put the bits around the eyes and for the moustache. If I close that one down, if I turn the composite off, cue that back up again, then we do get a very similar result. But if I open this 
image up, we can compare them. So the mask there, I think, is a lot less obvious than in that one. It's, it's very, very, very similar, isn't it? But just a little bit around the eyes there. So we close back and you can see there the colors are just slightly different. It's even more obvious if you've got text because when you're doing the in painting, of course, the entire image changes. Now you can do plain image to image as well. You can pop that on and that even works with in painting too. Of course, your mileage may vary as to the actual results. But my personal favorite is definitely still the rectified flow inversion. If you want to download the workflow for free, then head on over to Hugging Face. The one shown in this week's video is the Flux Simple with LLM image to image, Alimama in painting and rectified flow inversion. Hardly a mouthful at all. If you'd like to help support the channel, then Patreons get early access, extra workflows, various updates and other stuff like that too. A big thank you to all supporters for making this channel possible. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.